not the greatest athlete by a wide margin, but that hasn't stopped me from enjoying sports of all kinds. Volleyball is one of those sports I enjoy watching, but I couldn't name a single legendary volleyball player. Are there volleyball legends? Needless to say, despite being an Olympic sport, volleyball isn't the most widely understood game and is the kind of activity people play casually at the park or at the beach with modified rules. The major points of excitement for me are digs where players lay out for a miraculous save or a devastating spike over the net that nearly knocks an opponent out cold. There are few sports as exciting to watch as professional volleyball. What about the video games though, can they be exciting? Well, we have four to choose from on the NES. The oldest, simply titled Volleyball, then the beach volleyball trio of Super Spike V-Ball, Kings of the Beach, and the unlicensed Venice Beach Volleyball. Worth noting that Super Spike V-Ball was also on a second cartridge that it shared with the soccer game Nintendo World Cup. Anyway, let's see what's up with volleyball games on the NES. ファミコンカップバレーボール。やればやるほどリスクシステム。Let's start with the first one on the system, simply titled Volleyball. This was a black box game that was one of the first 30 or so games released for the system and it kind of shows. Volleyball adheres to the indoor rules and setup, so you'll have six players on each side. If that's intimidating to you, you can always select training out of the gate, and it's not a bad idea to do so for one simple reason. Which one of these little air humping maniacs are you? See, this game plays a lot like foosball, but you don't get to choose which line of players you are, which is fine actually, because that would be more confusing. As the ball is in the air coming toward your side of the net, the game decides who you can control based on proximity. And in training, the players you can control are highlighted a different color to help you learn who that will typically be based on where in the air the ball is. So yeah, you can move multiple players at a time, but what if you need to bump, set, or spike with just one of them? You can hit the ball with any of those players as long as you're under it before it hits the floor, but you can only spike with a player on the end of a line, and it depends on which end. This becomes a bit mind-bendy, but if the ball goes to the upper side of the court, only the far upper end player can spike it. If it goes to the lower end, only the lower end player can spike it. If it goes in the middle, good luck. That's a real issue with this one overall, it's just challenging to discern where the ball is going to go, which causes you not to have your players in the right position much of the time. Controlling six players at once is just too unwieldy, and it crowds the already tight on-screen play area too much. On top of that, there's no way to change how the game is scored. It's side-out scoring only, meaning you can only score if you serve, thus leading to longer matches. You have to win a best of five with the first team to 15 points winning. This can take a long time. And yeah, okay, all of the players are constantly thrusting their hips in a mesmerizing, air-humping way like excited beavis and buttheads, and it's honestly hard not to stare at. The volleyball is the size of a beach ball compared to the players, and the sound design is primitive, especially when the whistle is blown as often as it is. And, as you'll see in almost all of these games today, there's no diversity in the players to be found. You can play a one-player men's or women's tournament with the men's matches making the ball move a little faster, and there are two-player versions of these tournaments as well. The weird thing about this one is that you have to play as the USA. The other countries include the USSR, China, Cuba, Japan, Brazil, Korea, and of course, Tunisia. And those teams vary in skill based on their 1981 and 1985 World Cup achievements according to the manual. That's interesting but it would have been nice to play as some of the other countries if you wanted to. Volleyball is a bit too crude and unwieldy for my tastes, on top of using a scoring system that makes the games last too long. There is some nuance in the play though, you can develop effective strategies for striking positions and trajectories to fool the opponent. The AI will sometimes mess up, making for some quasi-realistic and often amusing moments, and, as with all these games, spiking and blocking are where the real fun happens. Alright, let's see what's next. Now home is where the action is, with the new Super Spike V-Ball from Nintendo. Go for Super Spikes and big digs. 
And now up to four players can have some hot fun with a new NES satellite. The only four-player wireless remote. With V-Ball and satellite, two's company, and four's really a blast. Even when you're playing from 15 feet away. The new NES satellite and Super Spike V-Ball. Nintendo, now you're playing with power. Super Spike V-Ball is a two-on-two -two beach volleyball game, as the rest of our games today will be, and it presents you with a lot of options for tailoring your experience. For starters, you can play on your own, with a friend or against a friend in a match, or you can go through a tournament by yourself or with a friend. In the tournament mode, the difficulty is based on the game course you choose. Exercise is basically practice. The American Circuit is an easy difficulty, and World Cup is a bit harder. Then after that, you select your character and your state. Characters range in ability, some better at defense, some spiking, etc. But it's really neat to see Billy and Jimmy from Double Dragon as selectable characters here. I guess they spend the offseason between rescuing their girlfriends, fighting evil organizations, and backstabbing each other by hitting the dunes for some V-Ball. And another thing I love about this one is you can pick to represent any U.S. state. Want to be the Nebraska Beach Volleyball team? Go for it. In the American circuit, you'll be pitted against teams from other states en route to the championship, while in the World Cup, you'll be taking on other countries, including a special match against the U.S. Navy, before going for gold against the USSR in the final. The gameplay for this one is fun, fast-paced, and quite arcadey. The presentation is nice, with the backgrounds highlighting the cities and locales you're said to be in, like Hawaii or Chicago or Las Vegas, and so on. Your sprites on screen are large, and there is a nice indicator on screen letting you know where the ball is headed so you can get in position. There are comic book-like flourishes with exclamations and onomatopoeia popping up when players do something exciting. A well-placed spike can send a player toppling backwards with the kaboom! There are a fair amount of customization options in Super Spike beyond what I've shared so far. You can change the scoring from conventional or side-out scoring to rally scoring that makes the games faster and a little more exciting to play. You can change how many points you play to in each set, so if you only want to play your tournaments as the first of five points and a best of three, go for it. Unfortunately, once again, there's not a lot of diversity here in the player options. Your choice of players amount to six white dudes, and while their character selection screen has them looking like individuals, when on the court they are the same sprite, which is kind of lame. But gameplay-wise, there's not much you can complain about with this one. There's a lot of customization for how you play the game, the controls feel tight, the game feels fair, the sound design is tolerable, and the music is nice and varied throughout. Plus, I keep wanting to eat junk food for some reason. Next! Kings of the Beach is Konami's, or rather Ultra's, shot at some beach volleyball action and akin to their Skate or Die and Ski or Die games, your menu is a hub on the beach where you can venture over to areas to train your skills on bumping, setting, and spiking, or you can just play a single match or try your hand at a tournament. Before you do any of that though, you can visit the registration tent and tailor the game to your liking. You can select between two players, Sinjin Smith or Randy Stoklos. These are real guys, so I guess now I do know two legendary volleyball players. Regardless of who you pick, the other will be your teammate, but Sinjin and Randy are a little different. Sinjin is better at defense and digging, while Randy is a great spiker and blocker. You can actually play with up to four players if you have an adapter. With two players, you can select to play cooperative or competitive. You can set the difficulty to either easy, medium, or difficult, and you can customize the number of sets per match. Once in a tournament, you'll compete in 15 total games. After successfully winning three, you'll be given a password so you can resume play later, which is nice because 15 games is a lot, and this game doesn't use rally scoring, and so a team can only score off a serve, dragging the games out a bit. Also, the score is not visible all the time like it is in the other games. You can only see the score if you pause the game, or it will pop up after one of the team's scores. Not a big deal, but I did find it a little annoying sometimes. There's a fair amount of nuance here. You can serve a couple of different ways, either by doing an underhand or a flat serve that have different speeds and trajectories. You can spike, block, and dig and dive. The gameplay is robust enough to be fun and engaging, although on the lower difficulties you can game the opponents to where you're winning matches 15 to zip with ease. 
A unique thing this one has over the others is that it lets you argue calls. If you thought a call was wrong, like maybe the ball was clearly out of bounds, but it was called a point for the other team, you can walk up to the ref's chair, press start, and argue your case. You may convince the ref to change his mind and flip the call, or he'll give you a yellow card to warn you that you're getting on his nerves, and eventually he'll dish out a red card which will dock your points. Your teammates may automatically complain to the ref without your input, and the opponents will as well. It's a really neat touch that adds a lot of personality to the game. Not to mention, when players mess up, they get comically agitated. Visually, this one isn't quite on the level of Super Spike, and it can be a little tricky to know where the ball is going to land simply by the shadow, but the game will lock you in position once you're close to help you out. While Super Spike V-Ball is much better looking overall, Keys of the Beach is just as fun in my opinion. I would have a hard time picking one out right over the other, plus this one has some really chill music and good sound design that doesn't get too grating after a while. Some of the player portraits are comical though, like holy cow, look at these guys. All right, one more. This one came out last, so it's bound to be the best, right? That's how it usually works on the NES, but in this case, and despite the evocative box art, this unlicensed volleyball game is just not very special. You do get to customize the difficulty, the number of points to win, the number of sets, and how games are scored, so you can select the much faster rally scoring option here, which I do appreciate, and you can select a player from a diverse roster, so that's great. So far, so good. Plus, each player has their own skill attributes, making them more than just palette swaps. However, the presentation is lackluster, and ultimately what you might expect for a game from publisher American Video Entertainment known for their classics like, uh, Blackjack and Solitaire. The sand is nearly green, the ocean in the distance is black, and the character animations are less than fluid. None of that is a real thrill breaker though. The thing that makes this one painful to play is the speed. Some bumps and serves can hang out in the air for an agonizing amount of time. And each and every time the ball hits the ground and a point is awarded, the game pauses briefly for a crab to scurry from out of view to retrieve the volleyball, which looks more like a basketball by the way, and drag it off screen. You cannot skip the crab. I agree, the crab adds some charm, but the crab also adds time to the game you'll never get back. Then after the crab does his thing, you still have to watch the awardees of the point briefly celebrate. The controls in this one are a bit weird to get used to. Your characters move at a rate of speed that doesn't match the speed of the slow moving ball, or crab for that matter, and it took me a while to get to the hang of pressing A to hit the ball and B to jump. But if you're spiking, instead of hitting B to jump and A to hit it, as you would expect, you press B to jump and then B again to hit it. While I can't find it in the footage, I noticed a couple of times where I got points for no reason, or earned two points at once. I'm not sure if I imagined it, maybe distracted by the game's cover art off to the side, but I have a feeling this one has some rough edges to its programming that causes some mysterious situations. One last interesting piece on this one, the manual is said to be written by Mike Myers and Phil Mickelson. Probably not the celebrities, but what if it were? Venice Beach Volleyball isn't terrible for an unlicensed game, but it's far from being Super Spike or Kings of the Beach when it comes to options for playing volleyball games on the old NES. The music is shrill and uninspired, it lacks any personality aside from the languid crab, and there is no tournament option here, just one-off matches. Well, that's gonna do it for today. If you were going to serve up just one of these, I'd say Super Spike V-Ball is probably the best, but i dig Kings of the Beach as a close second. Venice Beach would probably be a distant third with the Black Box Indoor Volleyball game bringing up the rear. Alright, well that's going to do it for volleyball games on the NES. As always, look out for crabs, and thanks for watching.